Hi everyone. In the last lecture series, we have seen the introduction to particles. In the introduction to particles, we have seen the properties of the particles, the size and shape of the particles, the measuring techniques for size and shape of the particles. In today's lecture, we are going to see about the properties of bulk solids and the storage. First of all, we need to know solids in bulk. When the solids are stored in outer surfaces, on the silos or bins, it is known as solids in bulk. The properties of the bulk solids depends upon the properties of their individual particles such as shape, size and the way in which they interact with each other. When the solids behave like a dry and non cohesive solids, so they will be behaving like a liquids. So the liquids, they will be passing through the orifices and other openings and they exert the pressure on the walls of the container. But they differ in many ways. Angle of internal friction. The frictional forces between the layers of the particles is measured by the angle of internal friction. The tangent to the angle of internal friction is represented as coefficient of internal friction. The angle of repose or reposing angle. When we pour the solid materials on a horizontal surface, it forms a conical heap. The angle with which the conical heap forms with the horizontal surface is known as the angle of repose. It is useful for transportation and storage purposes. For homogeneous particles, the angle of repose and the angle of internal friction is same. But for general practice, the angle of repose is lesser compared to the angle of internal friction. This is because the outer surface particles are loosely packed compared to the inner particles. The angle of repose is lesser for rounded particles and higher for the coarse and angular particles. It ranges between 15 to 30 degrees for granular particles and it takes a value of 90 degrees for cohesive solids. So if you see the table and the diagram, so you can find the angle of repose for different substances. Dynamic and static angle of repose. There are two surfaces, one is horizontal and the other is tilted. The angle made by the conical heap on the horizontal surface is known as the dynamic angle of repose and is represented as alpha. The angle made by the conical heap on the tilted surface is known as the static angle of repose and is represented as beta. The relationship between the coefficient of flowability and the angle of internal friction is given by k is equal to 1 minus sin alpha i divided by 1 plus sin alpha i. From this table, we can see the static and dynamic angle of repose for different substances. Storage of bulk solids. The different varieties of solids which can be handled in bulk form are known as bulk solids. The storage of bulk solids can be done in a two ways that is open or closed. In open storage, we can be storing the solids such as sand, gravel, coal, etc. in an open field. But in cold storage, we have to store it in a bins, silos, etc. If we store the materials in the open yard, it leads to environmental pollution such as dusting, leaching, etc. So in order to prevent this environmental pollution, we have to store the chemicals and hazardous materials in the bins or silos. The bins are the storage devices having the shortest height and longest diameter etc. The silos are the storage devices having the shortest diameter and the longest height. In order to store inside the silos, we have to use the non-cohesive materials. The top part of the silos is known as the cylinder and the bottom part is known as the hopper. We have to feed the silos from the top and we have to discharge the materials from the bottom. The frictional force between the walls of the silos and the solid particles is felt throughout the materials. Pressure inside the silos. The walls of the silos are exerting a frictional force between the solids stored in the silos. The apart from the frictional force, we are having the two different types of parameters which are influencing the pressure. The one is the coefficient of flowability and the next is the manner in which the solids are stored inside the silos. Pressure inside the bins. The pressure which are present inside the bins are influenced by the interlocking of the solids. Inside the bins, we have the lateral pressure is less than the vertical pressure so that the coefficient of flowability becomes less than unity so that we have to prefer the discharge from the bottom instead of discharging from the side. It is very essential for the design engineers in order to modify the storage vessels or in order to build a new storage vessel, they have to know the theory of the flow of the solids. So the important flowability properties are angle of repose, bulk density, particle size and compression. Stainless steel is the common material of construction for the construction of silos. Generally people may think that if we beat the silos, 
we will be getting a proper flow but it leads to numerous problems in order to overcome the problems we have to use the air injection system and vibrating the silos etc generally there are three flow patterns observed in the binson silos the first one is the mass flow the second one is the funnel flow the third one is the expanded flow all these flow patterns need to be understood in order to know the different flow types of the fluids in the material mass flow pattern is ideal for cohesive solids and those solids which degrade with respect to time in this type of flow pattern all the bulk solids move together when any of it is withdrawn as the flow is occurring along the sides of the container the stagnant zones and rat holes are eliminated this is also known as first in first out funnel flow funnel flow is suitable for free flowing solids and it is not recommended for cohesive solids the funnel flow is occurring as a cylindrical flow in the cylindrical section above the discharge point for cohesive solids inside the funnel flow the rat holes and stagnant section are developed it is also known as first in last out expanded flow is a combination of both funnel flow and mass flow in the upper section there is a funnel flow and the lower section the mass flow is observed the pressure influences the bulk density inside the container the pressure initially is zero at the top of the container and it increases in the transition zone and after transition zone between the cylinder and hopper the pressure reduces to zero and it establishes the maximum flow of the solid next we are going to see about the solid pressure bulk density and air pressure similarly the bulk density and solid pressure are zero in the top section and it increases and in the transition zone between the cylindrical and hopper section it is maximum and then it is reducing to zero again next we are going to see about the different types of flow problems associated with the flow patterns the different problems are no flow erratic flow flushing and segregated flow whenever these problems are occurring there are safety issues and quality control issues next we are going to see about the different flow problems associated with the flow patterns the first one is no flow in the no flow region inside the container different arches are formed this arch supports the entire mass and it prevents the particles to flow out of the container next we are going to see about the erratic flow frequent formation and collapse of the arches causes fluctuating discharges this is known as erratic flow this leads to personal injuries and structural damages next we are going to see about the flushing the flushing is occurring whenever the arch inside the container breaks it allows the entire mass of solids to flow continuously this condition is known as flooding or flushing next is segregated flow while filling the masses inside the container the fine particles are coming towards the center and the coarse particles are moving towards the stagnant zone let's come to the end of this section in this section i hope you have understood the properties of solids and their storage in the upcoming section we are going to see about the size reduction of solids thank you